Welcome to Isolation Comedy. This is, we're getting up there. This has been going on for too long, and I know that time doesn't exist for you, but it does for me, and it's every Friday. I remember what day it is. I am Colton Dowling, and I'm your host. Mm -hmm. This is Isolation Ooh. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. There's sometimes you'll hear some woos and some haws, and that's because the uh, the audience is the comedians. Sometimes <laughs> we need to find something really funny, and then you'll also hear Marcus... <laughs> and Michelle, because they love to laugh. Uh, thank you guys so much for having us in your house. This is not a stand-up comedy show, but you guys know that because you've seen these shows type kind of before, right? We've done this. I don't, I'm not going to say like, hey, there's two drink minimum. I'm not going to say like, hey, shut the fuck up. And don't <sighs> if you laugh. Laugh, you son of a bitches. <laughs> now put your hands together because we can't fucking hear you, okay? But if you hop in this chat over here, I think it's over there. It is. Okay, cool. Uh, no, it's not. It's there. <laughs> uh, hop in that chat over there and say hello. Introduce yourself. Tell us what's going on with you. Are you making a drink right now? I'm drinking Topo Chico because uh, the first two months of quarantine, I treated it like Joseph Stalin did when uh, Germany invaded. Remember how we blacked out for a week? I did it for about two months. Uh, so uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, I found out about God already. I was like one week in and I'm like, Jesus Christ. So uh, I found my favorite Bible verse. <laughs> Hands down. Uh, Mark 11, 12 through 16. And maybe you guys know this as the, the time that Jesus did that miracle by yelling at that fig tree. You guys remember that miracle? Uh, it starts off with Jesus was hungry. <laughs> They wrote it down. Seeing the distance, uh, in the distance, the fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for the figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Uh, wow. So that's, uh, that's a Bible verse that's pretty good for me. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, uh, you guys don't like it. You guys don't like this stuff. You guys are like, hey, I'm trapped in this reality. And I will just keep it moving then, okay? You guys want to see some good comedians. We have a great show for you tonight. So uh, I, will not be, I will not be that comedian for most of the time. In fact, I'm going to get the fuck out of here as soon as I tell you about how you can sh show some love, all right? We have PayPal. If you don't know who to like, uh, just send it to PayPal. Comedy William collects nothing of it. Um, if you like a specific comedian and you don't really know what to say to them, give them money on Venmo. We'll put it up there. And then you can say whatever you want to them. You can roast them. You can say that thing that you've always wanted to say to that person, but you've never really been able to like, catch them after the show and you didn't want to stand in that ridiculously long fucking line so you could shake their hand. You know what I'm talking about? No? Okay. If you've never been to a comedy club. Um, but it's pretty good. Um, put it in Venmo. Um, that's pretty much it. We got a, a great show again for you tonight. And uh, I guess I'll see you soon. But of course, make some noise. Put some noise in your own house. Oh, Woo! Yay! Oh, 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 oh. Tonight, Woo give it up for Katie Felton. Yeah! Yay! first so I feel like I am the state that is first to reopen and I'm nervous but fuck it I'd rather have fun right um these are going to be quarantine heavy jokes but let's see how they go um so I have a higher pitched voice so quarantine has been um navigating some new things for me uh I'm wearing a mask now and people can normally not hear my voice as well. So while I'm wearing my mask, I'm trying to talk loudly so uh, people can hear me. But now I feel like people think I'm a Karen because I'm yelling at them, but I don't want to talk to your manager. I just <laughs> want you to know that I want a number two 
not that I have to go number two. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wearing a mask is its own thing, but Zoom is also difficult with a, a higher pitched voice. There's a lot of talking over each other. You don't know when somebody is going to talk next. Um, the mic doesn't always pick up my voice right away. So, um, you know, I'm like five subjects back and I'm just yelling in Zoom. I had a ham sandwich for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All my friends have moved on to how crippling their anxiety is and they never want to come out, but I had a ham sandwich. So it's all good. Um, I am single during this quarantine. So, um, to try to make me feel better, people will tell me, well, at least you have your dog, which you're not wrong, but you're also not right. Um, the whole advantage of quarantining with another person is that they can come up with ideas and activities for you guys to do together. And you don't have to be the one person to think of how your whole day is going to go. Um, and my dog can't really do that. Like (laughs) if she were to think of activities, it would just be eating and sleeping and chasing squirrels. (laughs) Um, but I'm already doing two of those things. So (laughs) adding to eating a lot more now. (laughs) Um, I'm watching a lot of trash reality TV, which I was already doing before, but I've just kind of been catching up on a lot more trash reality TV than I was. Um, and Watching it makes me happy, but also depressed because I get to see all these people out in the world touching and coughing on each other. We <laughs> <laughs> sad. We can't do that anymore. But it just also makes me depressed about how insufferable I'm going to be as a human being six months from now because these reality shows haven't been able to film during this time and all we're going to have is documentaries And I'm just going to drone on and on about all the things that I learned in my talking. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Other than watching TV, I've been watching the Marvel movies in chronological order, which is really helpful um, to like figure out how they're getting all the infinity stones and the infinity stones kind of that there's like, levels and things you need to collect for quarantine like I have three out of six basic bitch quarantine stones (laughs) um I have gotten a tiktok account I have picked up a hobby that involves sewing um I have told everybody my likes and dislikes via gif uh, templates on instagram (laughs) So now all I need to do is get a tie-dye sweatsuit, bake some type of bread, and then do lives on Instagrams with my friends where I act like everybody's watching, but nobody is actually watching. (laughs) 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 Then I'll have collected all my stones, which might not seem like a huge accomplishment, but once Corona is over, one snap of my fingers, and I will not have to wait in line for brunch anymore. <laughs> um, also, related to TikTok, it's really fun if you're not on, but I just found <laughs> this out. Um, it's, call, it's actually called TikTok because that is the sound that all of these young TikTok stars are making to their uh, housekeepers for not setting up the camera fast enough while quarantining in their parents' mansion. (laughs) Tick tock, tick tock. Also, I read in the news that uh, Big Brother in Germany, they started filming the season in February before all of this stuff happened. So 
Um, if you're not familiar with Big Brother, they keep them in a the house and they don't have contact with the outside world. So they just told them this past week about coronavirus. And it was pretty shocking to hear that they waited this long to tell them, considering that Germany has a not great track record of uh, keeping a small minority of people in a specific space designed just for them and not keeping them informed of their what they want to do with them. <laughs> yeah, so I found that interesting. If I were Germany, I'd be like giving all the information up front so I couldn't get in trouble and reminded of World War II once again. Um, what else has been happening to me? Um, mostly just eating my face off, gaining lots of weight. Um, like I said, I'm single, so I'll talk to people on dating apps, but there's no intention of going out. And, and I feel like I have to update my dating profile because at this point I'm catfishing people with uh, my old pictures of pre-quarantine body. Uh, <laughs> And that's the one question that <laughs> oh, um, that cat knows what I'm talking about. It can relate. Um, <laughs> when I used to when I used to go out on dates um, before this happened, everybody would ask me what was the worst date I've ever been on. Um, and theirs usually had to involve like that they went on a date and the girl was fatter than her pictures. Um, and I just found that interesting that that was like the worst date they could ever have. But um, in comparison, mine was that uh, after immediately meeting up, he's told, the guy told me that um, he doesn't pay for girls on the first date because he hasn't gotten anything out of it in the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I had already ordered my food, so I decided to keep on going with it. And he later told me that he doesn't believe Sandy Hook happened and that there are lizard people running our government. So... Um, I'm pretty sure he's out in the world not wearing a mask, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> also the reason why girls are eating and getting fatter than their pictures other than Corona, it's because we go on dates with these guys and have to eat our feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so, that has been my time. Thank you for laughing. Um, follow me on Instagram at Katie Phelps. And donate for my World War II joke. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>
hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. It's been a while since I have attended a comedy show with this many cats. <laughs> in this situation, I know it seems weird. You know, I'm just kind of checking in to show you that I'm still alive. Here I am in a converted bedroom in the back of somebody else's house. But I want to stay professional for you. So let's make sure we get a microphone in here because we're all prop comics now. <laughs> stand up on the Internet for strangers that we got off of Twitter. Uh, but I'm glad to be here. You know, welcome to my studio. If you look in the back. Yes, I'm very white. That's how I prove it. I have framed. Sports Illustrated in here. <laughs> in world, I'm living in an oil painting of The Last Supper, but it's rappers. This is a big <laughs> conversation. And um, yeah, I, I am a white person who listens to hip hop, which means I consider myself an expert. More on that later. Um, it's been a big week for white people, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Finally getting some recognition by the media. Finally, it's been a, <laughs> a big week for white people using their phones. Uh, uh, you gotta be careful, you gotta be careful with these white folks. I, I know because I'm one of them, I'm from the suburbs too. I know exactly the mindset, right? White neighborhoods, you need to avoid them, everybody. It's time. They're too dangerous. <laughs> white neighborhoods are just way too dangerous. You know how these white people are? They're just walking around with guns all the time, right? With their armed gangs, their houses have way too many drugs in them, meth, you know, and they're just really, it's just really violent. They have no respect for authority. <laughs> uh, that's why you avoid their neighborhoods at night. Do not be in Simi Valley, California, <laughs> ever for any reason. Unless you're trying to score meth. And then please <laughs> hang out in Simi Valley after dark. Simi Valley is, they have two things from Simi Valley, uh, the police and incels. They grow both there. And so you just need to be very careful of these folks. All right, that joke I wrote, insane and alone in my house worked. Uh, <laughs> thank you everybody there. Here's one. I was never raised Catholic, but I was in the Boy Scouts. So I get it. Is that anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right. Now that we got that one out of the way. Let's keep it moving along. Our next topic. Uh, uh, my favorite thing about the coronavirus is calling workers with shitty jobs heroes. My favorite. Mm. The best, right? That's how you know. Hero is the absolute worst job. You never go to a guidance counselor and have them tell you you should be a hero. Bad career decision, right? Hero is just a code word for we're going to treat you poorly. That's it. In every single, think of every single hero, even Batman, great hero. We had to kill his parents first. <laughs> like, that's not <laughs> you know, grocery store workers are heroes. Nurses are heroes. We bang our pots and pans for the heroes. That's it we're all in this together by a Nissan. Uh, <laughs> this is just like every screen that we're, that we're bombarded with every, every single day. I work, you know, when I'm not making millions of dollars off of someone else's Twitch stream doing internet. <laughs> from room, I, I'm a hero. I'm one of, pay my bills, sort of, uh, working as a teacher. There's a lot of comics who, who do that. They want us to go back to school and teach in a mask in front of everybody. And then they also want to give you a gun. Mm. <laughs> that is what a bank robber looks like. And oh. I am for it. It's going to make it really easy come teacher evaluation time when the teacher has a gun. <laughs> it's going to be really easy to set up a fort in the teacher's lounge uh, and demand Betsy DeVos's head on a stick. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Is this anything? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. What else do I have? <laughs> 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 
Uh, lots of conspiracy theories out there. That's been a golden age of conspiracy theories now that we're all living on the internet. I love a good conspiracy theory, but not the ones that everyone else thinks are real, right? I, I only like conspiracy theories when they have to do with all the dead guys on this painting behind me. I know every conspiracy theory about the notorious B.I.G. <laughs> I also have several of my own that I'm working on that maybe if we live long enough and we can leave these bunkers, I'll tell you about it. It still involves the LAPD, so don't worry. Uh, the other conspiracy theories I like are sports conspiracy theories. Anyone with me? Anyone think that every single time your team loses in the playoffs, you go, the government did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I believe all conspiracy theories about sports, not regular conspiracy theories, just the ones about sports, right? Do I think that China created the coronavirus in a lab? No, but I do think they created Yao Ming in a lab. <laughs> There's no way that that guy just naturally occurred. The greatest threat to American supremacy we've ever had. That's why. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do I think the government is inflating the numbers about the coronavirus? No, but I do think they inflated Tom Brady's balls. So. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan has the vaccine, but the rest of America is just Isaiah Thomas trying to get him to call us back. <laughs> For two other people in here. We're all watching The Last Dance? No? Okay. <laughs> Uh, two words for the reopening of the NBA season. Bio, don't. Let's make it happen. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, you know, had a lot of fun here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's great to be able to scroll Twitter while still doing my set. It's great to be doing comedy again without pants on. Not a good for white guys named Joe. But, <laughs> all for listening. Uh, let's get your host back here and also uh, Black Lives Matter, you fucking idiots. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. Yay! <laughs>
I'm going to have to enter society <laughs> and, and, and people are going to be like, what's wrong with your head? Why is it so lopsided? Cool. And I'm going to end up being like, I'm going to end up having to say that uh, I was going to be like, I didn't think it was going to happen so soon, guys. That's, that's the case. <laughs> We're beanie. Um, while in quarantine, I've been thinking a lot about life and a lot about, um, a lot about like all of my, all of the shows that I've done in the past. And I've reminisced on some of the bad ones. I think I can look back and like laugh. Like one of the worst shows I ever did was for a black audience. I bombed so bad. Uh, I could hear alcohol being poured. <laughs> <on the> <laughs> 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 and, and then when i was when i was leaving the stage the host was like give it up for her and then nobody clapped and he tried <laughs> <laughs> he tried to get people to laugh for me for five minutes straight i mean to clap for me five minutes straight and they just looked at me <laughs> And, and it was one of those clubs where you have to cut through the audience to like leave. So I like had to walk past everybody to like get my stuff. Oh, it was, it was, it was bad. Uh, but I have had like, and I've also thought about like the shows that went really well, like too well. Like I had this one show and this guy, um, basically he was so into me that like, as soon as I finished my set, he, he messaged me on Instagram being like, Hey, let's date, let's date, let's date, let's date. And I was like, no. And I vaguely remembered him saying something about him having a wife, right? <laughs> so I do some, I'm very good at the internet. So I do a little research. I find him on Facebook and I see him a picture of him. Not only does he have a wife, I see a picture of him holding her and she's eight months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> she's so pregnant i see like a handprint coming out of the belly right <laughs> like that's so he keeps messaging messaging me asking me like, like hey let's date let's date let's date and i'm like oh, i'm not really feeling it now full disclosure i have this thing on instagram that lets me track like who follows me who unfollows me so one day i see that he's unfollowed me right and because I am a stalker, because I'm like psycho, I'm like, why? Right. Why? He was like so into me. He was messaging me every day. Why did it stop? Right. So I go to his account and I see a picture with a baby and I'm like, oh, he's gotten him his stuff, his stuff together. Right. So I click the picture of the baby because I do like baby pictures. Right. And I see that he named the baby. Lexi Grace. <gasps> oh, oh, no. oh, my God. <laughs> it's just my name. Whoa. It's, it's like, you know, and like, to, yeah, it's like, you know, he couldn't be friends with me, so he made me. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, you would have thought I touched this man because, but I was like, no, if I had touched the man, I would have been there to cut the umbilical cord. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and so it ends up being like, it ends up, what ends up happening is uh, my friends are telling me like, you know, they're like, Lexi, this is crazy. And I'm like, yeah, but like the baby is really, really cute guys. Like what you got to understand is the baby. She is so cute. <laughs> like she has my smile. <laughs> Like it's, it's beautiful. And, uh, my friends, all of my friends were like, you should unfollow that, that, you know, you should unfollow him. Like, that's really scary. Like you should really unfollow him. And I'm like, how am I also, am I supposed to keep updates on baby Lexi if I unfollow? Right? <laughs> um, I mean, the last update that I have is like a couple of, uh, a uh, couple of months ago, I he had sent me, I had, I had kind of, uh, he had sent me a message and I was worried, right? I'm also worried about his wife, but I was worried about him too. So he sent me a message, but it was a video message. And I end up open and I, I had to have like a bunch of friends come over and we videoed, we screen recorded it because we were worried like, oh, we have to call the police or something. And then, uh, cause I was worried. I didn't know what was going to be in it. And I opened it and it ended up, it ended up being a pyramid scheme, right? He mm -hmm. was like... <laughs> Please help me sell kombucha tea. And I was like, uh, I was like, I'll buy a few cases for little baby Lexi. Support the child. Um, 
I've been doing a lot of uh, FaceTiming with my family. And I have to say, I've come to the conclusion that, you know, while baby Lexi is really cute, my cousin does have a grumpy baby. Like her baby is actually really grumpy and not happy. And like everyone tries to like say that the baby's not grumpy. They're like, no, it's just special. You know, it's just special and unique. I'm like, uh. it's, a, it's a baby, not like an X-Man, right? <laughs> and I started thinking of why the baby is so grumpy. And I think it's because my, uh, because my, my aunt has decided that the baby should only speak in Spanish, right? <laughs> and it's like my aunt speaks, my aunt does speak, uh, my aunt actually, the problem is that my aunt speaks the baby in Spanish, but she doesn't actually know how to speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> like if Spanish, if Spanish is supposed to taste like pico de gallo, my aunt's Spanish tastes like mayonnaise. <laughs> like it's just nasty like the other day we were watching like the other day she was like she said to me she said uh she said yo soy burrito and i said what do you think you just said and she said i'm a grandma <laughs> and I, I said, uh, no you said you're a burrito <laughs> okay bye guys <laughs> How about I bring up another comedian? We have a couple <laughs> of, uh, this next comedian. Uh, you've probably seen them on Roast Battle Comedy Central, 12 Questions Podcast, Chupa, and the Cabra Podcast. Give it up for somebody you've seen here before. Give it up for Anna Valenzuela. Yeah. yeah. day of quarantine here in los angeles this is a ceremonial uh day 69 microphone uh it also shoots darts which is really great oh man i uh, i think i'm pregnant after sting i think i'm just pregnant for watching that um that was uh i was inspired i was like i better get the mic you know because he had his uh tantric stick i believe i um Wow, I had a dream last night uh, that I got the coronavirus and then I woke up uh, and covered in what I thought was sweat. It turns out my uh, dick cat, who you've already uh, met during this show, uh, he just <laughs> knocked a water bottle over on my bed. And uh, that's, that's what it was. I woke up in a puddle. So that's how I'm doing. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? I am... Um, my my therapist asked me the other day she was like uh she was like hey are you living a life that uh makes you feel like you're you know you're living your best life basically i'm not afraid to die i'm just afraid to live terribly and so <laughs> i uh so you know i'm a comedian which is uh pretty much living terribly and uh, <laughs> so uh i i made a commitment to myself that uh i will not cut my own bangs but god damn it i'm getting those bangs because everybody who told me not to get bangs <laughs> is bald now so fuck you <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna do whatever i want my hair. <laughs> Secondly, um, I'm definitely going to pierce my nose because uh, it's been pierced before and you should decorate the largest feature on your face, you know, like a Christmas tree. You know, you just really, really want to make it happen. And third, I started vaping. Uh, so apparently living my best life is being a total fucking douchebag. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm the trifecta, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, Wow, I'm very excited uh, that they have closed the borders <laughs> and that the food supply is now completely <laughs> fucked up uh, because that means I'm going to be able to live my dad's dying wish. I know my dad's dead. Funny, right? Um, I'm going to be able to live my dad's dead dying wish to go and watch 
white folks pick vegetables. Ooh, it's going to be good. <laughs> oh my God. It's going to be so good. You know, like it's going to be all those Kevins and Trevins and Britney's and baby Karen's just all out there on a kale date. <laughs> I can wear a big floppy hat and then we can have salads at the winery. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, can't wait. Cannot wait. I, uh, been reflecting a lot on my my romantic relationships like you do in quarantine. And uh, one thing uh, that I notice is if I have a type, that type is robots. That's what I like. Ooh, I love a robot. Ooh. Oh my God, I love it. It's like when I was a kid, I, I, I just like watched data from Star Trek and I was like, like, ooh, lady motor. Like I was very... <laughs> very excited about it um i my uh my uh, just to give you an example of the types of robots i've dated first off i've dated a republican which is just an evil robot you know <laughs> just like a roomba that says the n-word that's what that is um, and uh i dated i uh, i once i dated a scientist he's specifically a disease an infectious disease specialist. And man, I, I should have married that guy because uh, I'd be swimming in COVID tests right now. I'd just be taking them like you take a, pre a pregnancy test, just like one a day, you know, just making sure, you know. Uh, fun fact about that guy is he once, he, I once said to him, I was like, babe, you know, when we have kids. And he said, when? When we have kids? <laughs> oh, no, we're not having kids. And I was like, what do you mean? And he said, well, there's a 35% chance that uh, if we had children, they would inherit your uh, substance abuse and mental health problems. In addition, I don't want to contribute to global overpopulation. And I was like, bruh, you could have just said you don't like me that much. You know, like that would have been... <laughs> <laughs> my most uh my most recent robot boyfriend um he oh my god he a couple months ago he told me that he didn't love me romantically i know and he's a comedian so i was i was a little afraid he would say love me like a mom so i had to ask i was like babe how do you love me then and he said uh 101133 and i was like okay uh that is a programming joke for no one i um i <laughs> it is uh it's it's fascinating man he uh he he is a, a really uh you know interesting guy when he said that i do want you to know that in the state of california legally as a latina i was allowed to stab him so i did and um <laughs> that is that's just the way that goes i um uh he's a really interesting guy he's from san francisco california so he was born woke that's how they make them there um <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty great uh see he's so woke i mean like the only thing he can fix in our house is a pronoun that's it like that he doesn't <laughs> He's got me working like he picked me up from a Home Depot. I'm like, plumbing? Okay. Uh, thanks, babe. Uh, but yeah, no, he, uh, he's, he's a fascinating guy. He's so woke, he's never watched pornography. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most people, you yeah, liar. I, I greatly appreciate that you guys have not. I'm going to switch to gallery view so I can see if you have looks of disbelief. Uh, <laughs> but I know that he hasn't watched pornography up until a certain point because he fucks like a self-taught jazz musician. It is confusing. <laughs> uh, most of the time I'm coming and I don't even know why. I'm like, wow, it's really the strokes you don't feel, isn't it? Oh my God. So when quarantine started, I was like, babe, because we're not quarantining together because I've already stabbed him once. Uh, so we were not quarantined together and I asked him, I was like, hey, babe, like, um, why don't you watch a little bit of porn? Maybe learn a few things you know get some get some tips and tricks right and yeah. so he finally watched porn feminist porn produced in a studio which who does that and uh <laughs> it's like he's like i i'm just afraid someone's getting taken advantage of i'm like okay fine um <laughs> and so he watches the porn and he comes over and we're getting hot and heavy and i asked him i was like hey babe <laughs> what did you learn from your studying this week 
And he said, well, actually, I formulated a spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet uh, is categorized by the moves I think we can do physically, the moves I think we can't. I was like, oh, you learn nothing. That's it. You learn nothing. God damn nothing. Great. So I was like, okay, totally frustrated. I was like, babe, haven't any of your previous sexual partners ever talked to you about how, like, you fuck kind of weird? And he was like, oh, no. Oh, no, no one's ever given me a bad review. Oh, no. And I said, well, first off, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, women have to protect themselves. They don't know if you're going to go, Whoa, like, Ted Bundy on them. Secondly, um, secondly uh, what that means, babe, is somewhere there is a hundreds of group texts where people are like, oh, you fucked that guy? <laughs> he fucked weird, girl. Did he try to stick it in your ear, too? Who 69's dick down? Like, that is... <laughs> That's where he's at. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been fantastic. Put your hands and tiny hands and tinier hands together for your host, Colton! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! What the fuck is 69 dick down mean? Because I've been, I've been dick down a couple of times and I didn't think it meant that. <laughs> I know all these people going, I want to get dick down tonight. I didn't realize the <laughs> nine thing going on there. I've been missing out. Oh, sorry. I'm just going 30% mental health uh, pro- probability. <laughs> Let's roll the fucking dice. I play the yeah. lot every day. I'm just, I'm going to win this shit. 30%. <laughs> this is Isolation Comedy, if you're just tuning in. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Hop in the chat. Just subscribe. Invite your friends. Write little, you know, you can send us one cent, you know, and that, <laughs> that is a message that I'll read. I promise you, I'll read it. <laughs> that a message. I'm reading it, even if it's a penny. Um, say something nice. Say something mean. Say something at all. I'm so fucking lonely. Hey, <laughs> I am your host, and we have one, two, three, four, five more comedians. So I hope that you're ready for this next comedian, whose album is called One Long Merch Pitch, and it's available <laughs> everywhere. And now you're about to see why. Give it up for Dave Yates. Everybody, Dave, alcoholic. Hi, Dave. Long Zoom meeting. Oh man, oh, I blew one of those letters terribly. Uh, hi, Dave Yates here, uh, doing stand-up comedy in your living room and/or bathroom. That's where I would watch the show. Is in the bathroom <laughs> if I were here because that's the, the best place to do a comedy show. Um, I live in Los Angeles now, but I'm from the Midwest, so everybody out here calls me Midwestern nice. (laughs) What I think think that means is I'll talk shit about you, but I'll still help you move. (laughs) That's Midwestern nice, yeah. I've been trying to do some self-care during quarantine. Everybody's talking about meditation, so I've been trying to do that. But uh, being from Illinois... No one ever taught us how to meditate. Um, our closest thing is we stare into open bonfires. Yeah, that, is, that is Midwestern meditation for you. It's just uh, getting plastered and staring into burning flames. So uh, I'm trying to do a lot more burning flames out here. But uh, things have been going okay. Uh, I, I chased a mosquito in my room the other night for about 30 minutes. <laughs> 
And it's the most alive I've felt in months. <laughs> so I'm just starting to let other bugs in my room. Um, <laughs> the hard part is like when you're doing like Zoom conferences uh, and shows that like, like a wasp got in the room oh. uh, <laughs> the other night. And uh, I was on mute. So basically, I will mute just so you can see. This is what everybody saw. Nope, they couldn't hear anything. <laughs> that's really embarrassing uh, i like i like the zoom i like the zoom stuff uh you know especially especially for 12-step recovery uh, i got to see that this lady's stove was nicer than my apartment <laughs> And I, and I love a good Zoom conference when people share uh, about their quarantine. They're like, yeah, I live alone. And it's just so tough. I'm like, bitch, I live in Los Angeles. I got four roommates and all they do is dabs all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird flex. I'm so sad that you're alone in your apartment. Must be nice. <laughs> I, uh, quarantine has been all bad for uh, America. Uh, Portland has drive through strip clubs now I don't know about this. Yeah, drive through strip clubs uh, and they operate much like a car wash. You know, you, you, you drive up and you put your car in neutral. And then as it brings you through, you just, you rain them out the window. Just, <laughs> right? And then at the end, a stripper will buff your bumper with her bush. <laughs> <laughs> That, that is a Portland strip club for you. They don't shave over there, which is fine. This is fine. <laughs> How do you think I got this beard? How do you think I got this beard? <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. And this is this is a fact. Uh, one of the one of the uh, uh, strip clubs has even started doing uh, delivery strip clubs, delivery strippers. Strippers are working hard out there. Uh, and I wish this was a joke, but it is not. The company is called Boober Eats. <laughs> Boober Eats. So uh, I don't know how hard you're hustling during quarantine, uh, but there's someone out there that's doing a lot more work than you. Yeah, we're doing it, gang. All right, the police are coming. Uh, they're out there. They're out there. Yeah. I was like gonna make social commentary and I'm like, nah, not gonna, <laughs> not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Um, but yeah, I don't drink or do drugs anymore, uh, which is fine. I know what some of you are thinking. I can see it in the screens. Uh, quitter, uh, yep, <laughs> I, I, hardcore quitter. Um, and uh, my drug of choice now is coffee. And coffee to an alcoholic is very important. Like if I haven't had a good cup and it's been 24 hours, I'll crush up the grounds and <laughs> shit done today guys if i drink real coffee like i don't understand the keurig at all like who drinks one cup of coffee <laughs> <laughs> who, who does one line of cocaine <laughs> no one in a tie-dye shirt wants to hang out with <laughs> like a, like a cake cup is like a key bump of coffee you know like i'll do a cake cup if i'm getting paid at five o'clock I can go out and buy an eight ball of Colombian dark roast. <laughs> Jokes are working. I don't don't feel like I'm gonna hang myself after this. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a '90s kid. I'm a '90s kid, and um, yeah, you guys ever remember that uh, that movie Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest? Yeah, I was huge in the 90s. Uh, and for those who don't know, I, it was basically a cartoon animation about a rainforest uh, that was getting wiped out. A very, you know, serious topic. Uh, I just want to know why was Fern Gully the number one VHS of divorced parents? <laughs> <laughs> the, people, the people laughing hardest in the Zoom room have broken homes. That's number one. <laughs> Uh, number two, it's like was it in the memo? Like was it in the like the newsletter, the divorced parents quarterly? I don't know. Uh, uh, but I thought about it. I've had a lot of time to think, and I think it's because uh, divorce doesn't seem so bad when compared to deforestation. So uh, <laughs> you know, 
keep doing it. Uh, uh, most comedians will try to sell you some stuff or ask you to donate, not me. Um, I, I make and sell my own brand of hot sauce, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is real. Uh, if you don't like the jokes, that's completely fine. Uh, the hot sauce is called Ha Ha Hot Sauce. It's very real, and I will ship it to you. I sanitize every bottle. Uh, so you bought so much rice and beans. I know you did at the start of this quarantine. <laughs> And you're going to have to eat those nasty rice and beans. Uh, ha, ha, hot sauce. It's good for you. Um, if you got to go out in these streets, uh, particularly with the police sirens, this doubles as many skies. Protect yourself out there. And, uh, those motherfuckers in the eyeballs with some ha, ha, hot sauce. You can go to ha, ha, hot sauce.com for that one. And then, uh, you know, I, can I get it unsanitized? Uh, you know, I'll ship it to you, Joe. And uh, then you can insert it directly into your asshole. Uh, and it'll make it all sanitized. <laughs> you know? um, uh, but uh, out here, I drive a gas-powered car. In Los Angeles, I drive a gas-powered car, and uh, everybody gives me shit about it. You know, they're, they're like, Dave, you need an electric car. You need an electric car. Like, I think I hate the environment or something, which I do. Um, <laughs> but that's not why. Uh, I'm holding out to travel like a bank tube. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've been in the bank. You put a check in the tube before. <laughs> yeah. All my heroes travel by tubes. The Jetsons travel by tubes. Super Mario travel by tubes. It was like shoom, okie dokie. <laughs> I don't got to wait too much longer either because the homie Elon Musk is on the case. Yeah, the same man that brought you the Tesla and the ugliest truck in America <laughs> is creating the Hyperloop. Shoom. Capsules full of people at the speed of sound from place to place. Shoom. You can be the check in the bank tube now. <laughs> and to give you some science behind it, Elon's saying you're going to be able to travel from L.A. to San Francisco in 30 minutes. I can't even go three blocks in L.A. in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't going to be the first person to try these tubes out. Because they're going to have some kinks to work through. It's going to be like, shoom. <laughs> no way. That's why I propose we put pedophiles in the tubes. <laughs> right? Because no one's going to be pissed when they lose a capsule of those. <laughs> oh, crap. We lost another one. Someone call the Catholic Church and get us another capsule. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good punchline buy some ha ha hot sauce support the comics you can donate or follow me on social media at yates comedy ha ha hot sauce.com thank you guys yeah. Go buy his hot sauce. I, I, I definitely that uh, Fern Gully thing was uh, it was deep down. Me and my four siblings, we uh, have bonded over that. Uh, but we all thought <laughs> there was no problema with the rainforest because, like, they fixed the problem at the end of the movie. And I was, <laughs> like, I was like, no, I haven't seen the ending to the movie. Uh, they'll hear about it later. Uh, Less anecdotes. I hear you guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am picking it up. Uh, <laughs> we just keep it rolling. Uh, this next uh, comedian is the host of Stand Up and Deliver, a Zoom comedy oh. show. Give it up for Andre Ricks. Woo! <laughs> everybody i can't see you i can just see me uh i saw dave uh dave you got to do the chitlin circuit dog i don't know if you know anything about the chitlin circuit take I that sure hot do. sauce i take sure that. do yeah bro you're gonna make a killing <laughs> i got cousins i will hook you up with we got barbecues. <laughs> we got family reunions coming up i don't do hot sauce myself i'm you know i'm kind of weak when it comes to the food 
I also quit <laughs> drinking. I quit drinking too uh, for the one ingredient that they don't put on the bottle, which is confidence. There's, uh, <laughs> there's too much confidence in alcohol. Uh, I've been in zero fights sober. All right? <laughs> With the confidence of alcohol, I've been in one fight. And I was so sure I was going to win that fight. I just kept my hands in my pockets the whole time. That's how. I've never been that confident on cocaine. On cocaine, I'll just say some wild shit like, yeah, both my parents are white and I'm not adopted. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alexa, play in sync. I'll say some shit like that. <laughs> Something crazy. What's going on? I just saw that uh, Amy Cooper video when she was like harassing the brother Cooper video, whatever you mm. want to call it, whichever side you're on. Uh, mm. Go back and watch that video. That dog was sending a clear message. That dog was like, Amy, why are you doing this to us? That, <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> take me back to the pound. You, you finna get us involved in some racist shit. And she's trying to call the cops. <laughs> the dog's trying to get away. I was like, you got to listen to these animals. The animals are speaking to us uh, similar to Fern Gully, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you're not familiar with Friend Girlie, they remade it and called it Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that. Uh, speaking of old shows, uh, when you go back and watch shows as an adult, you kind of get a different perspective on shows. And so I went back. I used to love uh, what y'all fuck with Winnie the Pooh. I used, I used to love Winnie the Pooh, and then I started watching it again, and I was like, yo, they should call this just a bunch of junkies in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> well, the all addicts, you know what I'm saying? Pooh's addicted to sugar. He's got diabetes. He ain't got no fingers or no toes. <laughs> Christopher Robbins talking to animals. He's on LSD. <laughs> Eeyore, is, Eeyore is stoned out of his mind. Everybody thinks he's depressed. He's just high. He's getting the weed from Christopher Robin's grandfather. <laughs> Everybody knows you get the best weed from old white dudes with beers and shit. And I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't know. I just, just tripped out. <laughs> Watching these shows and shit. Uh, what else is tripped out is like, like I used to watch Winnie the Pooh. And then I remember like, I used to look up to celebrities and stuff. And But I remember the last celebrity I looked up to was Lance Armstrong. You remember that dude? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The only reason I looked, I'm not into cycling, but the last time I just wore that yellow Live Strong bracelet. You remember that? That yellow Live Strong? I used to mm-hmm. wear that every day for like two years until I found out he was cheating. And I was like, oh shit, this nigga's living too strong. I can't <laughs> dance no more. And then ever since then, I was like, I don't really like look up to celebrities, but I know a lot of people do. And it, it just kind of made it like a jaded situation for me. So. When like Bill Cosby got exposed, I wasn't surprised. Louis C.K. got exposed, I wasn't surprised. And I was like, I started thinking, I was like, man, if you tell me 10 years from now, Jerry Seinfeld turned out to be a serial killer, I'd be like, yeah, I could have seen that coming. <laughs> why, why else would you make a show about nothing unless you were up to something? You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll, put, the, I'll put the dots together. Now, okay? <laughs> Not crazy. Uh, so I'm up here in uh, New York right now, and when I got up here, uh, you could call it perfect timing, but Corona had hit and everybody was inside. Uh, but you know me, I was still out traveling because that's what I do. And uh, <laughs> I went, you know, I got some real intimate views of some stuff that you would only get with a lot of people. So I went and saw like uh, Yankee Stadium uh, from the outside, and then I went and saw. Uh, I got a real close-up view of the Statue of Liberty. You know, it was just me and Lady Liberty. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I'd fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not against, I'm not against it. You know what I'm saying? She got a. She got a. You know the proportions looked right. I got an inter- <laughs> no, Okay. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm up here in New York. I'm from. I'm from like uh, Dave from Texas. I'm from like the country area. And uh, if you're from that area, you know, like when you're talking to people. Uh, it can turn into a conversation for like 15, 20 minutes. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> you know Next thing you know, you're eating dinner. You're invited to all kinds of graduation. <laughs> shit. You're cutting their grass. You're doing favors. Shit. You just have conversation. Uh, in New York, it's a little different. You know, people are a little more like uh, just kind of touch and go. They don't really hang around. And so the other day I went outside and I, this old man was sitting on a bench. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ain't going nowhere. He's like 70 years old. I'm finna have a conversation. 
And I made a friend. That's PJ. That's my dog, PJ. I said, old white man, retired from the bus system. <laughs> and, uh, I was, I'm very excited to have PJ in my life. Uh, the only problem is I realized the other day after like meeting him a couple of times, uh, every time PJ sees me, he has no idea who I am. <laughs> he, it's the same conversation every time I see him. Uh, no. So, but it's, I'll take it because that's all I got right now in this quarantine situation. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was riding around the other day seeing something sad. Uh, have you ever seen something sad? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Have you have you ever lived a day? I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I was riding by this field, this like open field, and I seen a young I seen a young boy out there all by himself, uh, practicing the discus throw. Oh. The discus throw. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the discus throw is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> The Olympic sport where you hurl a metal disc in the air and then a judge goes and measures how lonely you are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, man. I feel like if you I feel like if you win that sport, you should get a gold medal and a friend. That's how I feel. <laughs> Very sad. I don't know if you ever seen somebody actively pursuing a life of poverty, but it, it breaks your heart. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I looked it up. I looked it up. Do you know the chances of becoming a professional discus thrower do not exist? Did you know that? That's not, a, <laughs> not something you can do. That's <laughs> nobody's, nobody's aspiring for these things. Uh, uh, real quick, Lexi, you were talking about the you bombed in front of a black crowd. The first black crowd I was in front of, I bombed also. And uh, it was so quiet, I could hear a dude from the back yelling out, booty ho! <laughs> <laughs> yelling out, booty ho! And then I went and did ecstasy and ate some booty hole that night just to see what he was talking about. So, hey, you guys, that's my time. I'm out of here. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good night. Be safe. Yay! called frothing it's not called discus it's called froth <laughs> okay let's say it again <laughs> last one of the night i hear uh we only have three more comedians so i hope you are ready this next guy i ran um i think three miles in heels on a treadmill the sweaty sweaty basement for this boy uh, and there were other people watching maybe he'll mention it maybe he won't uh, he runs a monthly showcase where that normally happens, so it's fine. Uh, he also hosts a weekly show um, on kzsm.org about music and life. Check it out. Give it up for Gabe Cortez. Woo! Everybody, it's me. I'm Gabe. Hi, nice to meet y'all. Uh, yeah, if you guys can tell, this is a very bright room that I'm in, very colorful. It's actually my sister's room because I've uh, been back home for a few days. I've been helping my mom clean out our classroom because I'm just like the best son. And <laughs> uh, yeah, and I want to play a little game. So uh, I'm going to go and start this off in the beginning of my set. If uh, we get some people maybe to donate, like, let's say a million dollars, I'll go ahead and get my mom to come in and give us all the sex talk. How fun. <laughs> so yes. get them donations coming, guys. We're all going to be 100 heirs after this, okay? Let's hope. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, um, I have a lovely girlfriend, okay, and I have had sex before, don't worry about that, <laughs> <laughs> and my lovely girlfriend, we've been spending a lot of time in quarantine together, we've been watching a lot of TV, learning a lot about each other, she actually me about, uh, cakes, um, the, the reason why, like, wedding cakes are layered, and, um, I didn't know this, it was actually, 
because you're supposed to take that top layer and uh, hold it, go ahead and put it in the freezer, you don't eat it, and then a year later, you take that piece of cake out and you get a divorce. So, <laughs> uh, that's exactly, exactly how marriage is. Um, it's pretty fun, guys. Um, yeah, do you guys like any impressions? I mean, no one can fucking hear me. <laughs> if you guys like impressions, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. shit, okay? Um, all right, guys, this is a, uh, this is a good one. Uh, it's Forrest Gump playing basketball, okay? Forrest Gump playing basketball. Kobe! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, that did a lot better uh, anywhere else. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've done I've done that joke to a cashier and she's laughed more. Thank you guys, <laughs> <laughs> man. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, whenever you guys see me, I assume you guys think ladies, man. <laughs> um, and I just want to tell y'all, I like my ladies the way uh, I like my cars. Okay, covered in dirt and uninsured. Hell yeah, you can <laughs> high five the wall right there. Okay. <laughs> Wall used to be my best friend whenever I was pushed up against it and beat the shit out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, being home has brought back some weird memories. Uh, I remember, like in high, in middle school, um, I was like really getting into girls, you know. And I uh, at the time I wore tidy whities because I was too like nervous to ask my mom to buy me like boxer briefs. Um, so I was still wearing the tidy whities and I had to borrow my friend's boxers to like convince a girl that I wore boxers and like damn wear tidy whities. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, dude, please, I need this. And he was like, why do you want my underwear? And I'm like, let's not worry about that. Okay. <laughs> let's not worry about that. Um, yeah. Uh, the girl did not like me. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was all for naught, right? It's actually vodka. <laughs> uh, yeah. I am 21, so don't even worry about that either. Um, no, my parents are cool. Oh, no. So it's very nice being back home. I haven't been able to see my parents throughout this whole... Uh, I guess, you know, they thought the phrase was, uh, was take a penny, leave me in a hot car. Because that's all they did. <laughs> but it's okay. I learned I learned how to sweat real good. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Yeah. Going back to uh, Andre said, he was like above us. <laughs> did, you, did you guys feel like dominated by him or what? Yeah. Pretty, hot. Pretty fucking hot, dude. Because uh, I'm black. Yeah. No, 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 I swear, Andre, no. It's because you're just so masculine. He's masculine, I don't know. One time me and him were uh, staying at an open mic and I just felt so bad. I felt, I always feel like people can kick my ass, but mainly around other comics that are stronger than me, I really feel like they can kick my ass. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, being home has really made me think about life. And uh, in high school, my girlfriend cheated on me. Uh, not to bring up the sad stuff, you know, but yeah, she cheated on me. And uh, it was with my best friend at the time. Mm. Uh, yeah, it sucked. And the reason I found out wasn't through <laughs> like a friend or like catching them or whatever. Uh, it was that my best friend butt dialed me in the middle oh. of their coitus. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so I like, oh my God is right. <laughs> so I like answered the phone and uh, and I was just like shaking, you know, and I was like, hello, love of my life, how are you? And um, and I just heard stuff like she's never told me. And she was like, oh, this is so much better than Gabe and, and I love you and super, super sad. And I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. So I was just like still on the phone. And I was like, hey, get out of her. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, you know, I listened on for the hour and a half that went on. <laughs> Fucking 
shitty and <laughs> dude he could last okay what can i say <laughs> gonna give it gonna give it to her you know um and i i confront him the next day we break up and uh unfortunately uh i come to find out that they break up a few months later <laughs> and then uh just a few that was like a few years back you know i'm in college now we've all moved on two months ago that dude uh i found out they murdered his current girlfriend yeah stabbed her to death completely murdered her is facing time in jail okay don't worry about that you can sleep easy um yeah he he murdered her so naturally i messaged my ex right and i was like Uh hey uh it, it could have been you, bitch, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what happens when you mess with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all right? Uh, guys, uh, yeah, if we get to a million dollars, I will have my mom read the text that she sent me when I was 18 years old about sex, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So keep donating, all right? It'll be fun. Uh, that's me. I've been Gabe Cortez. Bye. <laughs> Cortez. I'm wondering what underwear he wears now, though, right? Because like, <laughs> I went boxers, but then I came back to briefs, and now I'm doing thongs. You know what I'm saying? I like the lift. <laughs> I like the lift. No lines for me. Oh, <laughs> he was gonna come in with it. Also, he wasn't ready for sex. I mean, he was. Come on, he wasn't ready for it. So, I mean, <laughs> I cheated on, but like god or something <laughs> hey guys we have two more comics left this next comic carson fuck <laughs> i'm sorry you i wrote i was reading the notes and i said your name first and anybody who knows anything knows that that's a big fuck up on my mm. part and i like to call out my fuck ups okay not like trump well, hey, this next <laughs> comic is an Austin-based comic defying my, her OBGYN's orders and doing stand-up comedy at 35 weeks pregnant. And she hosts Mimosa and Mike's, a Sunday brunch time comedy show. Follow her on Instagram, Carson with a child. Carson! <laughs> <Finn>. <laughs> Same as fuck all of a sudden. Carson, fuck. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, the president is in the house if you're watching on Twitch or however we're uh yeah, the future pre- future president of the PTA. <laughs> all right, I know I'm like that annoying pregnant lady that you're like totally mentally judging, saying it's late, don't you have a curfew? Shouldn't you be home? I am home, assholes, and so are you. <laughs> <laughs> Colton, you should have put me on earlier. But anyway, in this pandemic, everybody's on Twitter. Some people are saying whatever they want, and they're getting flagged. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you should be uh, tracking your Google searches because because uh, Google is and like <laughs> for tiger porn or tie dye buttholes. <laughs> I'm not you, okay? Um, but anyway, in this pandemic, um, I'm searching for board games. All the puzzles are gone, and so board games it is, right? So most board games I'm searching for, they don't even have boards anymore, right? I'm just bored. <laughs> but specifically, I'm looking for the board game <laughs> with the instructions that alone take up 45 minutes to just set up. And then when you are set up, you say, okay, we're good for the next time we play this. <laughs> but my husband and I were at odds choosing between two board games, the, the statistics one and the emotional one. That's basically our marriage. <laughs> so we did what normal, not bored people do. Rock, paper, scissors. 
<laughs> but let's talk about those instructions, okay? Like, is it rock, paper, scissors, shoot? Is it rock, paper, scissors, and you shoot on scissors? So then there's a debate that starts, right? Scissors, shoot, scissors, shoot, right? What is it? What is it? And right, but right before we're about to get into a fight, we say, fuck it, let's have sex. <laughs> but yeah, I have had sex. Um, I won't tell you how many times, um, but here's a clue. Um, I've cooked up one toddler and I have another one on the way. <laughs> You'll realize that uh, the answer is at least two times. I think that's a low number. Well, you need to give me more credit. Um, and if you think that's a high number, you will never get any credit for anything. <laughs> so, anyway um so yeah i am indeed with child although i really hate that phrase because it's very biblical it's very mary and joseph and i'm jewish <laughs> but i can't tell you who is with child kidnappers and priests Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes um but okay, we've got more time on our hands, and that means something super gross. People taking baths. <laughs> I hate baths. Like babies, babies, babies can take baths. They're good to take baths because, I mean, can you give them a shower? I think that's like illegal. <laughs> but even the phrase, I'll draw you a bath, right? That's what butler say like what does that even mean i need a butler so that i can just fuck with him and say no dude paint me a shower <laughs> but with baths you know you put your toe in and put my legs in and my butt and it feels so nice that's what you're convincing yourself it feels so nice it feels so nice but it's really scalding hot and then you're sweating and then you put cold water in and then you're sitting in a luke warm bath with sweat all mixed in and you're thinking about that and you're telling yourself that this is relaxing and then you gotta pee <laughs> like do you ever just like pee in the bath like just just a little <laughs> And then I'm thinking about all the gallons of water that I'm wasting or using. And then I see Greta Thunberg's face and she's like, okay, boomer. And I'm like, I'm 36. <laughs> and then there's the bubbles and the bubble baths. And I'm never going to look like Julia Roberts because my legs are too short. But even <laughs> in the bath, I'm just like not surrounded by suds. Like there's like a few and they dissipate and they pop and there's my wrinkly body and right now it's like really wrinkly <laughs> so no bath or bubbles but how about bath bombs okay i'm terrified i'm terrified of one piece of glitter in my eyeball <laughs> never mind dumping a whole handful to float around near my puppet okay <laughs> And the worst part about a bath is that you're worse off than when you began, right? <laughs> you know what you have to do is take a shower. <laughs> Honestly, if you do not have a baby, you should not have a bathtub. <laughs> Unless you make moonshine. <laughs> but, okay. So I am so excited. I'm going on a vacation. I know. During a pandemic, how lucky am I? Get this. All expenses paid trip, food and beverage included. It's a private room, the latest technology, penthouse view. Each room has its own attendance, a concierge, a team of people to make my stay as plush as possible. Drugs, <laughs> I want them. I mean, I might be naked. I might be naked for some of the trip. Guess where I'm going? 
El hospital. <laughs> I have been in the house in more than 60 days and in like 25 days, girls trip. <laughs> okay, my husband, he's coming too. And as for girls trip, I don't even know if I'm having a girl or a boy, but a trip is a trip. And I gotta tell you, maternity award. Here I come. <laughs> no toddler in tow, no schlepping of strollers and diaper bags and snacks like Cheerios that just like disintegrate right into the car seat and crayons and construction paper and stickers and not just any stickers, the stickers from the Toy Story movie four and Wally -E and oh, and not just four or three or two or one stuffed animals, Five stuffed animals you gotta pack because just in case that little someone just asks for that hippo and you just didn't pack it. <laughs> I'm so excited for this trip. <laughs> oh, is it gonna be a getaway? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go have a baby. Colton, thanks. <laughs> Carson Quinn, yay! Woo! I promised myself no more anecdotes, but boy, do I have them. Just trust me. <laughs> <laughs> we come down to our last comic, but special treat. Uh, the other Gabe promised <laughs> to feed his mother's sex talk with him uh, on text message. So Gabe Cavazos is about to leave. Uh, other Gabe is about to come in and read the sex talk. I He had... <laughs> I don't know. I've been like asking my siblings, like, did you ever get the sex talk? And he has a record of that sex talk. I'm so excited for that. But first, <laughs> this uh, final comedian is uh, producing a comedy show at Doc's Drive-In Theater, June 19th. Jasmine Ellis is headlining. Woo! Woo! A sing and dance on that stage. Um, I have some a couple anecdotes for that too, but. I'll, I'll leave them for there. Give it up for Gabe Gavazos. Woo! Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> what I'm talking about. I brewed this beer uh, during quarantine because uh, I was bored. Uh, but what, when I opened it just now, I smelled it. And uh, I'm not going to drink that. that, that was, <laughs> <laughs> it smells so bad. Uh, I did that wrong. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it would have happened at a comedy show anyway. <laughs> All right. So uh, during this quarantine, um, I uh, decided to use my job and my skill set as a data analyst uh, to put together a presentation on everything that I've gathered uh, since this whole thing kicked off. And uh, start here. <laughs> now uh this first this first chart is uh the pie graph about <laughs> here and uh if you look here I, i'm not i'm not that scared of touching my face i'm more scared of our president uh the thing i'm most afraid of live stream comedy shows <clears throat> This is a uh, Venn diagram comparison of quarantine and prison. Now I've never <laughs> been to prison, uh, but I, I assume that uh, you write a lot of letters. Uh, now there's a 
racist fuck going to be in there. That's going to be cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, right now everybody's getting early release, but hey, with that Pornhub premium, so is everybody else, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, this, uh, is exactly what it looks like. Um, they wouldn't let me show tits on, uh, Twitch. So I did the best I could. You're welcome. Now this is interesting. This is, uh, this is a word cloud of, uh, words that I've told my mother since quarantine started. Uh, you'll see. <laughs> I'd like to keep her informed about what's going on in the world, um, and uh, this is this is how she responds to me. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I uh, I printed out some some uh, pictures for reference. This was her before. <laughs> 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 now you can tell she's happy you see the smile uh, people say we have the same eyes too um, I can see it um, her eyebrows make her very suspicious though. this is a uh and this is a line graph uh, that my therapist asked me to make. Um, right here, you can see uh, my depression. Staying steady, staying strong. You know what I'm saying? Uh, spikes. Right, and you, right here, you can really see where the quarantine starts because that's where loneliness just shoots <laughs> off. <the cover. laughs> I mean, way off the charts. It's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. And right here, this is interesting. You can actually see where the stimulus check hits my bank account. <laughs> and right here, you can see me losing my fucking job. Yeah, it's it good times. Uh, also, you know, student loan payments, never going to happen. They're never getting their money back. I didn't even really get an education. <laughs> This is a fun one. This is taxpayer money spent uh, since uh, since quarantine. Uh, healthcare costs are rising. Military still high as hell, slowly declining. They realize that hey, uh, during a global pandemic, maybe war is not so important. <laughs> huh? It's like we never needed them in the first place. <laughs> this spike right here is uh, is actually when uh, the uh, Department of Defense decided to to fly the Thunderbirds <laughs> all over the U.S. <laughs> Small increase, but uh, nominal. <laughs> right here is the, uh, the the Planned Parenthood line, and uh, boy, does that need funding. <laughs> now this is uh, this is myself wearing various types of masks. <laughs> Uh, this is what I think anytime I'm in public wearing a mask. <laughs> hmm. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> I had a blast. I, uh, I'd love to tell some more jokes. Um, I think I should mention, though, uh, it felt like everybody else did. I've had sex before. <laughs> you know that, you know that all of you are wondering, and the answer is yes. Uh, with Gabe's ex girlfriend. You guys have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>
what sadness looks like on a graph. <laughs> good. I never know. It's hard to know how steep it goes. Uh, but over time, it, it, it okay, whatever. Hey, I said I was going to do less anecdotes, and then I thought I should do it. I'm just glad I've come to learn. It's been 10 comics I've learned, but that's been our show. Other than one thing, Gabe Cortez has, um, has promised to tell us his mom's sex talk, which was on record because she texted it to him. She, <laughs> she like, you know, have a shitty breakup goes. And you're like, I can't believe she just broke up with you over text. That's what your mom was <laughs> like, responsibility? I think not. <laughs> I will simply SMS this bitch. So <laughs> give it up for Gabe Cortez. Next talk. Okay, hello everybody, I'm back. Man, that's two Gabes in the same Zoom chat that have had sex. <laughs> I guess, what are the odds? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could turn that in for some lotto tickets or something, who knows? Uh, I just wanna preface this, my mom actually gave me four sex talks. Uh, this is just the only one that was documented. She just kept forgetting that she gave them to me. Um, but I think this was the first or the second for sure, uh, probably the second, because uh, she had just caught J&O, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, she just caught me just screaming in my bed and, uh, and was very worried. Uh, so I was off at school and she texted me this like at 830 in the morning, <laughs> which is not whenever you want to hear it. She said, uh, she said, son. I understand that you're getting older. I love you and I want you safe. I've noticed you started looking at girls the way your dad never looked at me. Oh. This is completely this is completely <laughs> natural and not at all shameful, no matter how much you feel like God is crying. <laughs> we were we were religious. <laughs> Boys tend to have higher drives when it comes to the joy of the flesh. And I want you to experiment. That's totally fine. When you come home today on the counter, there'll be a box of condoms. Go ahead and try one on to make sure that you're not allergic. <laughs> <laughs> Some people call them little balloons, but I promise they'll save your life. Just remember to always put one on when a girl tries to deflower you. <laughs> Uh, I was like 16. Um, <laughs> I love you, son. And if you have any questions about the love and passion, ask me. Because your father would never know. And that is it, guys. That is, <laughs> that, that is, that is what my mom wrote. It's been on my notes since 2015. So I hope you guys enjoyed oh, that. <laughs> Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, woo woo. Yeah, I can't whistle. I'm a fucking loser. Uh, yeah, sure. What's the outro? Hey, thanks for watching Isolation Comedy. Oh yeah. Uh, night, eight p.m. We got like ten comics. You've probably never heard of eight of them, but we're having fun. Okay, so. <laughs> Let's go ahead and party and uh, keep on living, guys. Hey, if y'all want to, like, just talk to me about, like, how sad you guys are, uh, just hit me up. My phone number is 210-748-0051, okay? So let's hit a boy up. Uh, much love.